Attention all listeners, this podcast is now sponsored by the author of XI, a collection of poetry on being human, written by Andrew Joseph Zaragoza Jr. Release date is going to be August 15th. Pre-order is available now. More information located on the bio. Thank you, and looking forward to hearing from you soon. Now on with the podcast. Everything. Good old Samuel is back on Shoot the Shit. It's going to be good. We got the new member, Rob. The announcement didn't drop right now that this is the fifth member of the roster, the ever-growing roster of the Knights of Horror. The list? The list? You just made the list, Mm. pal. (laughs) I like it. Jericho. Jericho, he gets it. Yeah. He understands us. You just made the list. You just made the list. (laughs) Freaking... uh, (laughs) Um, all right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Shoot the Shit, the podcast where we talk literally about anything we want to. Uh, and today we have a very special guest. Uh, not even guest, he's a permanent member now. He's a permanent member, right, Sammy? Yes, sir. Um, a lot of pressure. I don't think, I don't, that is a lot of pressure. I, I mean, we'll officially, um, you know, knight him in one day when all, all the stars align. But, are, we gonna you know, do it like, are we doing like the Tony Stark Infinity War? Like mm-hmm. he just, you're an Avenger now? You can, or? you can knight me in with this. With Lucille? I got my Lucille back there. <laughs> it's not bloody, but, <laughs> you know, yours yeah. is better than mine. <laughs> I'll show you yours. I'll show you mine. You show me yours. <laughs> is that what that was? Uh, um, it's, got, guys, uh, it's got awkward real quick. It did. Guys, this is Robert Estrada. He runs a channel called The Howling Hour. Uh, we met him, he's been a fan of the channel for quite some time, and we got to finally meet him at Not Scary Farm last season. We got to meet up, uh, talk for a little bit, and take some pictures. Uh, Rob constantly messaged me just to, you know, keep in touch, and, and we talk about some stuff, uh, re- related to, like, the, the haunts, the, uh, some horror events, movies, wrestling, whatever it may be, uh, me and Rob have been talking for, like, the last couple of months, just, just bullshitting, um, guys shooting the <laughs> shooting the shit is what we were doing um but i i made the initiative decision to uh bring rob on to the channel those are words initiative decision <laughs> initiative decision i like it I like it was it. the avenger initiative all right well what, what does avenger stand for again what do you mean there's no this doesn't stand for nothing i thought he i thought nick fury gave the acronym at the end of uh Oh, that was for, like, Captain. S.H.I.E.L.D. or something. Oh, S.H.I.E.L.D. S.H.I.E.L.D. Strategic yeah. Homeland S.H.I.E.L.D. Intervention. Uh, <laughs> Strategic Homeland Intervention Enforcement Logistics Division. I'm a nerd. Those are a lot of words. I, I applaud you. I'm a nerd. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I wanted to bring Rob on because, one, the guy's got a great personality. The guy can bring the vibe to the channel that I think uh, – Will and Logan have also brought onto the channel, and I, I really think that if we expand our crew more, uh, we would look fucking badass walking through these haunts. We'd probably take up the an entire. Bro, place. imagine us! Imagine us coming through the fog down Fog Alley. The, the characters would be scared of us. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that statement. They're probably watching now. They're like, "Oh, we're gonna put that to the test." Now they're oh. really gonna, yeah, they're gonna come for <laughs> us. You thought we were about to get Sammy bad next time? There's a haunt. You just wait. You just you just signed your death certificate, dude. It's okay, I'm Sammy. A, just, uh, just stand behind me. I'll protect you. All right, thanks. At least someone will protect me. Tony <laughs> throws me to the wolves. I do. I do. It's good content. All right. Yeah. Get good. him. Get him. He's scared. He's scared. Get, Get him. Up. Go. He's scared. Over here. Scared over here. It, well, it's especially funny when he falls asleep on a bench, and you know <laughs> you're trying to signal a scare actor without waking him up. That's the best part. That's uh, a. It's a that's, challenge. That's true love and friendship right there. Right. Um, but no, I think Rob's going to be a great addition to the team. We're also going to help him try to build his channel up as well. So he can also do his, not only if he doesn't feel like doing Knights of Horror stuff, but he's got his own stuff. So go subscribe to the Howling Hour right now. The link will be in the description below. Uh, we're definitely trying to help him build his channel up as well, but he will be also a crucial member to the team. Um, given that how many opinions now? Sixth, sixth opinion. The sixth opinion. (laughs) Sixth opinion. So let's do a recap Uh, of who's on the team first. Okay, you got me, you got Sammy, you got Robert the photographer, you got um, you got Logan, you got Will, and now you got Robert Estrada, the Howling Hour. So, 
got quite the team. And then Marissa Hinojo, my, my stepsister, who every now and then will want to jump in there and say she wants to be part of the team. But like I, when I tell her what kind of stuff that she'll see at these events, she kind of usually backs away. Bro, but she was a she was a trooper last year. We went to uh, uh, Horror Nights. She was a trooper. Horror Nights. No, no, no. She went to Horror Nights without us. She went to uh, Knots with us. So she's a trooper. I'll give it to her. She didn't go to Knots with us. Yeah, she did. My her sister. And, uh, yeah, her and what's his <laughs> name? I forgot that dude's name. He was on his phone. He's playing games. He's a homie. I remember she went with us because I remember he was taking that one guy was taking an extra long time in the restroom. We were chilling right there in Boardwalk. <laughs> I by, uh, by the He's got a better memory than I do, man. Bro, come on. I remember the dumbest things. Bro, <laughs> ask me something things. important? Probably not going to know. <laughs> but I can tell you that one time we were waiting by the restroom by, in Boardwalk. In Boardwalk. <laughs> by the entrance of Shadowlands. That's right. She didn't go. Now I'm remembering it. It's all coming back to me. We were um, supposed to go to IHOP or Denny's, but then you were kind of like, I'm kind of tired. Oh, yeah. I didn't it all, it, all, it all comes together. You were tired. I know you were tired. Bro, I'm never tired. Mm. I feel like you guys were there. Like, you just never left. Uh, you were there from, like, beginning to end. And, and uh, I loved all the content you guys put out. It was it was awesome. I felt like I was there with you guys. But I remember the day I ran into you guys there, and I was just like, man, these guys are just putting in work. And, mm. and uh, you, you're you always uh, posting stuff, like, on Instagram. And you guys just were like, it's, like, 3 in the morning. And uh, we're on our way home from Not Scary Farm. And I was like, man, these guys just, I don't think they ever, you guys didn't sleep for like that month and a half. I don't think, I, I don't think we did. And if we did sleep, it was sleep, wake up, upload, at least for Tony. Yeah. At least, or when I'd spend the night at this house, I would wake up like at 9 or 10 or whatever. He'd this guy's insane. Like this one. guy wakes up at like 9 or 10. I'm like, I'm waking up at 1, dude. <laughs> I'm getting ready for the next night. Yeah. And then he would be chilling out, wakes up. Puts his camera in, uploads his footage, makes sure all his batteries are charged, right. and then we leave. <laughs> that was always the worst thing to do is to make sure your fucking batteries are charged. And if I can give any advice to anyone out there, get, like, at least six batteries. That way you have three that are charged, ready to go, and three that you can take with you, and then you can just flop them for the next night. I let think I'm going to invest in more batteries. Let me take notes on that. <laughs> have six, yeah. six extra batteries. Yeah, dude. It's like <laughs> you can take three that night, and then you have three when you get home that are already ready to go, and then the next night you flop them. You, you charge the other one. However, this thing with me is like every time I go to a haunt, especially with Horror Nights, I never – I always get through with one battery. I always do. I don't know how that works. I don't know how that works because we're waiting in line for like 80, 80 turnings. Yeah. So what am I going to film? The lines? Like, I don't, I don't want to film the lines. It's boring. <laughs> I don't want to see that. Yeah. If we need any line footage, Sam, pull your phone out. Yeah. Uh, upload something to Instagram. <laughs> yeah. That's just how that's working. Or go live on Instagram. There's your line footage right there. <laughs> um, no, but I think, yeah. I, yeah, Rob, we were probably there every night. If we could have spent the night on that bench, we would have. I did spend the night on that bench, I think. You have slept a couple nights on that bench, yes. <laughs> There were some nights where he got some naps in, and he had to very, very much be careful in Ghost Town. But uh, in Hollow, he yeah, was safe. Yeah, uh, I think those funnel cakes put me to sleep. I think they put something special in them. <laughs> Saw the, uh, it's in the, the was it the boysenberry uh, sauce? The sauce. So that's the something we got, to talk about. Um, we got lost in the sauce. <laughs> uh, Taste of Calico sells out. Taste of Knots gets announced. Um, so what no, no, mean? wait. Before you even get to there, Taste of Calico gets sold out, expands for another yeah. few weekends, and then says, then Knott says, well, if we can do it in Ghost Town, well, let's go all the way through the park. So almost. we're doing now. Now it's official. It's park wide now for Taste. Of well, Nuts. I don't think they. Op- I don't wow. think they opened Camp Snoopy. I think it was just Ghost Town Boardwalk, isn't it? Ghost Town, and Fiesta Town, Ghost Town, and, and it went all the way to Johnny Rockets. Well, I think well the the new one's gonna go, um, Boardwalk Ghost Town Fiesta. So okay. the only part they're not opening is Camp Snoopy. That's gonna be cool then. I guess they'll have vendors and I guess. With I Fiesta. mean, just to I feel like just to get back in the even though you know there's no uh, rides or anything, I feel like just to get back in the park in that environment would be uh, uh, something positive right now. I think right. I, you know just to get in there, I would I would enjoy that. Oh yeah. Just I mean, to- I I loved watching people's videos. I watched the. Uh, SoCal's and TLEVs, and I just felt like I was there. I was like, man, yeah. it's going to be lit. So I can um, say I'm, right I, now, me and my dad will be there opening night for Taste of Knots because we really want to go. We wanted to go did to you buy your t- We're going to buy our tickets tonight. 
But I tried to, I tried to, like, I asked my wife, like, uh, I think it was like the first weekend they, they did the taste of Calico. I asked my wife, she's like, I don't feel like going back there. And I was just like, great. And she's like, just go by yourself. And I was just like, well, I don't want to go by myself. Who's going to hold the camera while I eat everything? <laughs> that isn't, that's not Who's smart. Hold the so, camera? but yeah, no, I'm going to try and convince her to go, uh, for the taste of knots and see if, see if I can, uh, convince her somehow to do that. Cause I wanted to go to taste, uh, taste of Calico, but for sure I want to try. Even if I have to go by myself, I'll, I'm going to try and go to this one. If you could try to go by yourself, try to go. I'm try. I'm trying to go that opening day. Okay. Um, because I, I really want to do it early this time and just get out of the way, even though it might be packed. I'm I'm hoping that. From what I've heard with Taste of Calico, they did a great job with social distancing and everything. Mm. They they really made you feel safe in that environment. So. I imagine with the park being more expanded, if they still have the same amount of tickets every night for like how they did with Taste of Calico, they should be fine. Yeah. Because now you're more socially distant than ever. You have more lands to hit, can walk around. I mean, I'm excited to see what Fiesta Village has to offer because that's where the Mexican food is going to be at. Yeah. <laughs> You know, boysenberry taquitos. Oh, food. dude, boysenberry taquitos. I'm all for that. Boysenberry guac. Oh, dude, that sounds good. That sounds so good. Boysenberry guac. That's what it would be right there. I don't know how that would be. I don't know, man. You, you'd be surprised. There's a lot of interesting. I mean, boysenberry barbecue wings. Ooh, like a barbacoa taco with like boysenberry on top, like a like a uh, like an adobo boysenberry sauce. Probably be pretty bomb. I feel like it would just yeah, I and mean, like whatever the flavor is, it just makes it better. I think I'm gonna get a lot of hate from this panel, but I'm not a big boysenberry fan. Bro, Ooh. boysenberry punch is my best friend. I like right, boysenberry guys, I'm punch. Out. I'm out. All right, it's that's out. That was it. His short time on the night's over. <laughs> He's like, oh, you don't like boysenberry? I'm gone. Um, no, you know what? I wasn't a huge fan of boysenberry either um, until I I started doing um until I started going to Not Scary Farm and then I tried stuff and I was like, hey, it. it, it not so bad and then i guess i just maybe uh grew a taste for it right no and i think uh the boys are very punch with the sprite i really like that oh dude every every horror nights when i go that's that's my my mixture right there those right. two because it gets that fizziness and oh yeah yeah i love that. Down with that's, that that's great yeah i mean what was it last night we after we filmed me and you were talking about those stupid silver souvenir cups that just oh, saved dude. our lives. Money saved. Oh, yeah. So you got the buffet, did you? And you guys automatically got souvenir cups for the night, right? Yeah, we got the we got the souvenir cups. Um, I get. I mean, I honestly, I don't even feel like the buffet is that expensive to get the cups because I think the cups are like normally fifteen dollars by themselves, right. right? So I mean, you're paying like an extra ten bucks to eat. So I was like, yeah, it's worth it. But yeah, we get the cups and and fill up all night, and uh, I drink more soda. Than I should to admit that. But Sammy, Sammy does too, because you know he's got to have the caffeine to keep him awake. But it, it didn't yeah, work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a switch between all right, let me get coke this time, then let me feed my fantasies with boysenberry punch, yeah. let me cleanse my palate with water. There was even times where he drank a monster and the guy still fell asleep. I was like, how? And then it was a uh, rinse, wash, repeat on between rinse, those wash, three things. Yeah. Sammy and I, and I'll say this, this is going to be disgusting, but Sammy and I did not know what the meaning of washing our cups were every weekend. Like, he had to, like, literally tell me, hey, wash my cup this weekend. I'm like, yeah, because they would just literally sit in my car. and like, throw, Yeah, we, I was going to say, throw it in the back of the car. Yeah, just throw it in the back of the car. We, and we, when we show up to Notch, just get some water, rinse it out real quick. And, and there was actually, and I even got disgusted by it. I'm like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wash these things, like, every weekend now. Well, no, like it makes sense because if, if you leave it in the car, the car heats up the plastic, and then when you put the water in, it's hot water, so Boom. it kills all the germs. You're good to go. Mm, math. Math. <laughs> math. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Clearly math right there, man. It's, um, uh, it's custodial knowledge right there. Custodial knowledge. That's true. <laughs> Bro, I don't have my degree Sammy, in the you custodial don't know arts. About, you, don't, you, don't, you don't know about that life. You got to get that degree Bro. in custodial arts, man. You don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know that, man. That's, that is, that's right. Rob's a custodian, much like me. I am so a we, custodian. We, we, can, custodian. Uh, we can relate on that. Yeah. Uh, I just service people's mortgages <laughs> <laughs> logan, i just like, push paper all day logan plays guitar for a tribute band and, and works with electricity will's still in high school eddie does banking stuff from the east coast and robert my our photographer works with me so he's a custodian as well well i mean uh i play drums i don't know if that holy what? shit yeah, I've been playing the drums since I was 
I was like 14 years old. We got a fucking band working the Knights of yeah. War Presents. <laughs> Bro, and I can sing some opera, so there we go. Okay, you're going too far. <laughs> I can't sing opera, but, uh, you know, my... Uh, I would dream. like to see you attempt to do it, though. Bro, don't even tell me to do this right now. <laughs> no, not right now on camera. You will <laughs> you will blow my speakers out, and I will not be able to listen to any of you guys. Bro, you just got paid. You're fine. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's you're right. I could just buy some new speakers. Um, yeah, man. I mean, no, I, I really... Um, I, I really think that the the taste of Nasta this year might be uh, might be. I think this is a big makeup for the Boysenberry Festival. I keep oh, saying that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And uh, I think that this time around they're gonna have more to do. I mean, you can have, of course, in the Boardwalk area, you can have that like American style kind of food where you have like burgers and, and you know you have chicken and you have all this different stuff. Of course, Knotts is famous for their fried chicken, so I mean, you know, I, I don't know how if they have any stands there that have like a Boysenberry sauce with the, with the fried chicken. I mean, that would that sounds pretty good, honestly. I'd be that. interesting. Sammy, would you eat that? I know you'd eat that. Bro, I love chicken. I know that they were going to have boysenberry churros somewhere. I'm very sure. They had that. that at the last one at Taste of Calico. That, and they had a boysenberry mm-hmm. ice cream cookie sandwich. I know. I that, saw that one time. That's looking Yeah, bomb. the cookie sandwich looked good. Yeah, that looked bomb. Look at us, man. You know, just kidding. I was really upset because I just found out they had a. I had, I had just found out that they have a boysenberry slushy, and I went an entire no. six weeks without trying it. I don't think they had – did they have it at – is that a year-round thing or was that just for Taste of Calico? So the ice cream was for Taste of Calico, and I heard the icy is year-round. So that's a, that must be an exclusive thing just for Knott's then. Probably. They got that deal with icy. I mean, icy's are great. Yeah. I'm more of a slushy yeah. guy. I like not or 7-Eleven. That's me. I uh whatever whoever gives me the bigger size, I'm gonna go with them. So I think it's huh. I think Seven Eleven gives you the pretty good size. I like to buy my slushy and then stick it in the freezer uh, for like two days and then just chomp on it. Uh, make that my own good. icy. You ever get the uh, do you ever get the candy straws that they have too? The sour punch candy straws. You know what? No, I've I've never gotten them. Dude, Are they good? They're delicious. Have to try the only thing I would suggest is get a regular straw as well because they come they get increasingly hard to suck out of. Okay. That's what she said. Bro. You just don't have the skills. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, and you do? <laughs> no, I definitely do not. <laughs> uh, no, I really I, I think that this time around though that knots thing will work out. Which brings me to what what do you think a good idea for Disneyland would be to open up Main Street for like a soft opening of the park to kind of get that nostalgia of going back to the park or do you think that'd be a bad idea because so many people would go i personally think it would be a bad idea because uh disneyland's a whole other beast yeah and look at look at them just opening up uh downtown uh, downtown disney yeah it was crazy those people in lines just to get in the line to get in a store so yeah opening up disney even for you know like some you know a soft reopening for just main street i feel like there'd be a lot of a lot of people there waiting. Yeah, because us. I mean, I can say us pass all days because my pass is technically not expired. Mine is. Expired. Mine's gone. Well, I know it's gone, but I did call in and I said I need my additional two weeks. So I didn't. They better give. <laughs> so. They better give me my two weeks. That's all right. Um, uh, I mean, I I don't think I'm gonna go in those two weeks, but I better get my money's worth. But what if this, Sammy, like, what if the stars align? Like, what if the park reopens and you just happen to be in town for those two weeks? I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just, you'll, I'll never be the same. Yeah. But um, back to the, back to the topic at hand, I think if they were going to do it, um, I feel like California's, California Adventure is probably the best way. Because I feel like that's a lot more space than Main Street. Because Main Street is so tight. And doesn't have food locations, right? Um, uh, they have one because they have three spots, I, I think, from what I heard. Yeah, um, based upon yeah, watching the Plaza Fresh Inn, Bait. the one right there going towards uh, Adventureland, the carousel, the carousel, and then the one that's like right directly in the middle, across from Starbucks. Yeah, so there's three spots for that. Um, where knots, what what gave knots a lot is they have a lot of different little spots where you can get stuff. Um, so I think that's what made knots allowed, like easy to do that. And I feel like California Adventure would be the best option. It's more spaced. Um, they've already had a lot of practice with the food and wine festival. That's what I was gonna say. So l- l- let's bring that up. So what if they did that? They brought kind of a version of that back for California Adventure. You think that would work out or no? 
I think that I think that's their best option. I don't know if it'll work because once again, like Rob said, Disney people are wild. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, they are. Like they have a different fandom, and right. I love them, but they like if you say you can get any glimpse of Disney, they are there. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, we've proven our love for Disneyland. Well, we proved our love for Star Wars because. People were lined up at midnight. Dude, I've proved my love for Guardians of the Galaxy. I waited three hours to get on that ride. <laughs> we were there at mid. We were there at midnight the night, the day it opened, right. and waited till seven p.m. to, to ride, ride the that ride. Goddamn ride! Oh god, don't remind <laughs> me. That is the so, nightmare that you didn't want to end, but at the same time, you're like, okay, I'm kind of over it now. <laughs> so I think Disney people have proven they are wild, and they will prove they are wild again. If they open Main Street just for any glimpse. But um, but also a thing, too, I think that would work like how Knott's is doing. Um, you make people buy tickets like in advance to right. get in. And that way you're 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 limiting how many people are actually going to get into the park. So that if they did that, that would work. But then I know, you know, people with passes and people who had tickets uh, might make a ruckus about, well, why can't we get in? You know, if the park's open. So. I don't know that, like like I said, Disney's a whole other thing, and and uh, but I do think if they took the knots route, is you know you got to buy a ticket to get in, um, it it could work out. Uh, but if they did yeah. the something similar to the food and wine, and made you buy a tasting card, and that's the only way you can get in for the yeah. thing because you're going for specifically that event, I think it right. can work out. I mean, it'd be cool to walk around Paradise Pier again, or it's Pixar Pier now. Uh, Pixar Pier, walk up and down where the thing, you know, the the whole Marvel Land and Cars Land entrance is at. Just to see all that. It'd be cool to do photo ops and stuff, you know, just to kind of get that nostalgia of Disney again. Yeah. Um, I feel like they could do, like, a Disney after dark if they were to do anything. Right. Um, but I also think because it's Disney, they cannot put a price like Knott's Buds. Oh, yeah, Knott's they'd is gonna charge be you an yeah. arm and a leg yeah. just to get to that damn event. Yeah. Um, and it's not their fault. It's literally because the demand is so high for Disney and the supply is limited because there's only one park that is Disneyland. Right. Yeah. Um, that people are willing to pay $200 if that means they can spend four or five hours in that park. Right. Which is wild to me. It very much they have, is. <laughs> they control us. It's, it's insane, man. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, theme parks – it looks like this is the first initiative for the soft reopenings to see how they do with control wise on this and if they can go forward from there in california i mean it kind of hit us out of nowhere so it's kind of like a little we're sneaking people back into our park we're not letting them ride rides but we have an event going on that will keep them busy now knots yeah. is taking it to the next level where it's like all right we're going to open more of the park we're still not gonna let you ride rides but we still got enough to keep you busy so we can shop and, and eat food and kind of just enjoy the park in general eventually Knott's is going to get to the point where it's just like, okay, the whole park is open. You still can't ride rides, but you can still try food. And then eventually it's going to go, okay, the park's open. You can ride everything. Do you think, and I would pray this would happen, do we get a little bit of mazes? Because they're going to do a taste of Halloween at Knott's. Origins can work. I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you exactly what I told you last night. It'll be the floor back mazes. That is all it will be. Unless they have Cause origins of, built, because we don't know what it looks like. That and Dark Ride, we don't know what it looks like inside there. There's no way of getting footage of that. Yeah, but if they haven't done construction, I'm imagining they're not going to be able to use their sound stages. I mean, sound and stages are already set up. I would assume. What are, what are your thoughts, Rob? I... This is kind of just something I just based on all the rules that we've been getting from, you know, the governor and, and the mayor and all that. I always felt like they could still put on an event, maybe obviously it'd be a smaller scale. But for some reason, if the roof was off the mazes, um, like with the airflow and everything, I feel like they could do something along those lines. So I don't know if anything inside would work, but um, maybe mazes outside a few mazes outside um could meet the rules of what what you know right now what we have in california right. I, don't, 
yeah i don't i don't know that's the only thing i like when i started thinking about everything and how much i wanted all these events to happen i was like well what if they just took the roofs it would not be as um you know i not not so much as entertaining but you know you wouldn't get the full experience of part as far as you know just everything being you know kind of built in but you would still get mazes and i was just like well what if they just took the roofs off of everything and then it's like you're not in you know confined in a small area walking with a bunch of people and obviously right. they would have to uh control crowd control would be a huge thing you know so i don't know how they would do that but you know that's one way i would say maybe they could put a couple of mazes along with a taste of halloween uh, so here's what we know for knots so far as, as well as the outdoor mazes go i can't say anything about pumpkin eater because we can't see that one that was backstage but shadowlands location has not been touched since the beginning of quarantine nothing is built in the back where special ops was that was going to be two brand new mazes right there so as far as outdoor mazes go i don't think they would unless they're going to cook something up in the next two three months <laughs> i mean the cookbook will be the open the cookbook is officially open for business and john cook's going to step in and like this is how we're going to do it this is how it's going to go i'm john cook you're you. I'm in charge. <laughs> You're not. Um, Watch him work his magic. It's going to be like, boom. There it is. I'm like, all right. I respect it. Um, but talking on the line of haunts, it looks like Fright Fest actually might be open still. Oh, yes. I've been seeing a lot of news circulating that Fright Fest says regardless of what's going on, they're still planning on opening. So that's and this... one haunt. We're oh, gonna go ahead. I'm sorry. We're going to have to travel all the way out to Valencia just to go see this. Here's the thing, and this is why I was. Uh, it made me think about knots. Is I know I used to fright fest is kind of how I started off going to going to haunts. Um, I think I went and like first started going in two thousand and four, two thousand four, two thousand and three, um, and all their mazes are pretty much like there's no roof. You see the sky, mm -hmm. and I'm not gonna say low budget, but there's very like uh, it's very kind of uh, they don't put as much into as obviously HHN and, and not, but it works. And I, I still enjoy those mazes, but that's what I always thought. Like maybe Fright Fest still had a shot because of the way they constructed their mazes as opposed to other, uh, other haunts. So I'm that I would be, I would drive out there. I'll drive everyone out there uh, and go to Fright Fest. Cause that's, that's my old uh, stomping grounds over there. I guess we got a Fright Fest guy now, huh? Awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's our first one. That that's that's your that's gonna be your role in there. You're gonna be our fright <laughs> go fest to, guy. Go to fright fest. Get the footage. No, I, hey. I I think the plan is too is like if if for some miracle that they do accept us with media, um, I have not yet tried with Six Flags, so I don't know what the standard is for Six Flags. But if we do get accepted for media and they and they're gracious enough to invite us out, uh, we'd be happy to go out. Um, I think it would probably be me, you, and and your wife right there. Uh, Rob, that way we can all go out and have a good time. Unless Sammy, right. for some reason, is down that weekend, and then we can bring Sammy along as well. Um, highly unlikely. Highly <laughs> unlikely. But, no, I, I think I'd bring a, uh, you guys, you two, because, Rob, you know Fright Fest. I, I know Six Flags very vaguely. Like, I know my way around it, but I don't know uh -huh. how it's like with Fright Fest. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I like I, I hadn't gone probably since – I hadn't gone since 2000 and I want to say 10. Um, actually, no, I know I'm lying. I, I went a few years because I was waiting for my cousins, my younger cousins to get old enough to where they were interested in horror right. and that I took them there. And then eventually I took them to knots and then um, HHN. But yeah, no, I, I haven't been there in a while, but y'all, I mean, I, the only reason I stopped going was because they didn't really change it. They didn't change the mages, the mazes too much. So it's kind of the same thing every year, but yeah, I, I, I love that place. It's like, uh, it's just, you know, one of those where it's like, oh, this is where, this is where I first saw my first, you know, slider and, and yeah. this is where I got scared and all that good stuff. Although, uh, Sammy, this is where I would want you to come with us because, uh, we'll talk about it off camera. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Because <laughs> you want me to make things awkward. I do. <laughs> that's that's your role in all this. You know it is. You know it. Can you smell what Sam is cooking? What the Sam is cooking, man. <laughs> well, so uh, now we're going to change topics because this is what this show is all about. 
what are you guys' current thoughts right now about wrestling? Now, and the reason I bring this up, hold on, I bring this up for a reason. Lately, I've been watching a lot of past stuff where you had the audiences and it really brought that energetic vibe to wrestling. Now, they're doing what they can with, you know, so much of what they can, but... I don't know, man. I think we need more matches like that WrestleMania Undertaker match and that Bray Wyatt uh, Braun Strowman match because I really enjoyed those. They tell a story, they get the wrestling in, and it's very like effects heavy. There's the edits that they can do to actually make it a good story, uh, and they go on location to actually film these things. Like the Undertaker match was flawless, in my opinion. Is that was his last match ever? He came into Metallica. He was the freaking American badass one last time, and he left, and it was just flawless. I mean, like, the storytelling was great. Everything was great about that match. And then, like, the Bray Wyatt-Braun Strowman match, it wasn't flawless, but it was a very intense and very good storytelling match. So where do you guys think the future of wrestling is going to go if this pandemic keeps... you think people are eventually just going to forget about it, or you think they'll, they'll have that strong fan base? No, I, I feel like the, the fan base is there and it's definitely, it's, I, you know, I still watch it. It's definitely different without, uh, crowds. Um, it, it's, I, I kind of laugh a little bit cause you know, they still, well now they, they've actually put, you know, some of the wrestlers in the crowd, but right. before when it was first, well, uh, when they were first doing it with no one there, you know, they'd still play to the crowd, even though there was no crowd there. So I was just like, this, this is a little weird, but, um, the fans are still there. Um, we're just, we're kind of just, you know, we're, we're waiting where it, the, the crowd does bring something. I, I'm not going to lie and be like, Oh no, it's, it's as fun as ever. I watch it because I love wrestling. Um, whether there's a crowd or not, I'm still, if it's wrestling and a good storyline, I'm in it, but having no fans there, uh, definitely it, you're lacking energy. It's that would say you're, it's definitely lacking energy. Right. Definitely, I agree. Sammy, are you still are you yeah. still into it as much, or do you kind of keep up with it? Um, so I haven't really watched anything in terms of new stuff since WrestleMania. Um, outside of just like a clip here or there, um, kind of just whatever I can read on the internet sometimes. Um, <clears throat> but like based upon the clips I've seen, it's kind of I didn't, I just find it boring, at least in my own opinion. Um, Ooh, hmm. you triggered Rob. Just because there is no fan energy. Um, and they don't play to the, they have, they don't have anyone to play to. Um, and I think there's something special, like when Steven Austin, you know, Steve Austin comes out and the entire crowd pops. Right. Um, yeah. as opposed to, you know, someone coming out right now that's kind of just like, okay, like they just made their entrance. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah. And I, and I'm also not like, I feel like they're not like producing their best right now. Um, in terms of, uh, like, who they have. Because, um, like, I really feel like at least current wrestling doesn't have those stars that get pops anymore. Right. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, when old people come out, like, one of the older wrestlers come out, like, if The Undertaker comes out, crowd is popping. The Rock comes out, crowd is popping. But if, like, Drew McIntyre comes out, like, it's not a pop. I mean, there'll be some fans that'll be happy, but they're not really popping or... I mean, Daniel Bryan, someone gets a pop because everyone's going to do the yes chant or whatever. But, like, there we go. Rob's, Rob's going to do it. Rob's but, do it. Uh, but, you um, know what I mean? Like, I just don't think there's as many wrestlers that are just pushed to the moon. They're getting pushed just to, like, slightly earth atmosphere. Um, and so, like, I think that's one of my biggest problems with wrestling is without fans, there's no pops. And there's not really anyone that gets pops currently outside of, like, when they bring someone back. And, like, I feel like they've been relying so heavily on, like, nostalgia by bringing people back, like, Edge and, like, Randy Orton. They're kind of pushing him to the top, and they're not really pushing out, you know, some of these younger guys to the moon. You know what I mean? So, that's my biggest issue currently with wrestling. Um, but I think eventually, post-COVID, you know, fans will come back. Because I think, regardless, they have millions and millions and millions of fans. Um, and so... Um, I think that's just my current thing I like, with wrestling. I like uh, I like Rob's enthusiasm. He's doing the he's doing the Rock. He's doing some yeah. yeah. Ryan. Oh, this is this is I'm, I love I was it. Throwing, I love this conversation. I was, throwing, I was throwing him in there just to you know get the <laughs> get him in there. Um, um, and, uh, and 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 
I really feel like I was expecting more with AEW coming back, coming here, um, with that whole Wednesday night rivalry that was supposed to really, I feel like, pop off between AEW and NXT. Um, and so, yeah, I think like that's the whole thing. And I think they need to push NXT more, in my opinion, because yeah. I feel like that is going to be the future. That's their money maker um, right now, honestly. Yeah, um, like people like Adam Cole, Bebe. You know what I mean? The Undisputed Adam Era. Cole, baby. I'll let you guys get it off real quick. Um, um, Undisputed Era, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like they got a lot of good stuff going down there. And they have a lot of these other wrestlers that they're just not pushing. And it's just feels like it's the same thing over and over and over again. Like, I would love to see more Finn Balor. I would love to see a lot of these other people that are just not getting it. Um, and a lot of people are getting cut, you know what I mean? Like, Zack Ryder just popped off into AEW last that, night. That was a surprise for me, honestly. And that's so that's another but, thing I'm talking about. Is like you got you got guys like Jeff Hardy going over there. You got guys like freaking uh, the Revival went over there. You got guys like uh, Gallows and Anderson went to Impact. But I mean, you have guys like Zack Ryder who went over there. And it's like just wasted talent from the WWE. It's literally it really let me form a monopoly and, and get it's like, all of these talent and then not use them. It's like not only that, but it's like. It's cool that they're debuting, but they're not getting the pop that they would love. You know, you got that audience that, like, yeah. when someone debuts in an arena, it's a mind blown because, like, fucking two months ago they were just with WWE and now they're here at yeah. AEW. It's like a, it's a big slap in the face to Vince. Uh, well, yeah. the, the biggest thing, in my opinion, back to that whole pop thing, was Matt Hardy when he should when he joined AEW, that should have blown the roof. Yeah, that would have been Jacksonville. a huge pop with the delete because he was coming back as. The, the deleted um well i, I like you know, the character he's, doing. he's got like three alter egos he's got like the matt hardy he's got like the old school like matt hardy and he's got the the, the broken matt hardy which i really think yeah it's a really thin, and like thin, thin, even thin. on uh the whole seamus uh, jeff hardy thing like when he kind of showed his brother nero was coming out like that would have brought a lot of fans to their feet oh yeah but you don't get that now yeah, it's. It, it, I don't know how necessarily I felt about that storyline of him kind of exposing his past with alcohol and, and drug abuse. Um, That's Vince being Vince, though. That is we Vince already Vince. know that. Um, this is the same guy who gives Roman Reigns chance after chance after chance after chance after chance. After but chance. he's not going to get that no more because uh, he proved he ain't his boy. Uh, well, he, he can't. <laughs> he proved though. his health is more important. He said, My health is more important. He's got leukemia, <laughs> dude. The guy can die. <laughs> oh, I get that. <laughs> I get that a hundred percent, and I a hundred, a hundred percent behind. You COVID should give it a hundred and ten percent because you've had COVID and you know what it's like. I give him three hundred percent. The percentage is infinite for that. <laughs> but I know that Vince is like, well, when I needed you most, you weren't there, so uh, you're oh, down to got? the dumps now. What does he got? He's China. Up. Oh yeah, here we go. Here we go. Now keep in mind, I did not purchase this. My wife loves this man, and she uh, bought it. I guess to rub it in my face. Roman Reigns. Yeah. My mom loves him too, so it's like. Yeah, you know, it's I, don't, I think like, it's. My mom loves him. My mom loves him too. She's like, I want to watch that guy wrestle. <laughs> my mom loved The Rock, so it's like that whole Samoan blow. Like she likes the Usos. Yeah. She likes, she likes Roman Reigns. Like it's that whole yeah. thing. Um, but yeah, Sammy, you were saying wasted talent, and I agree with that. They have a lot of talented wrestlers out there that can really bring it to the table, and they're just wasting them. This, um, now I know this goes a few years back, and when you sp speak of wasted talent, I know just stuff I was reading on, you know, like wrestling websites is Vince, you know, got all those guys um, that were speaking of like wasted talent to kind of keep them from, you know, being his competition. Because he knew, you know, the Young Bucks were coming up with AEW and Cody and all them. And like, I, I watch these guys like Adam Cole and, and you know the the uh, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, and, you know uh, Roderick Strong. Like I've been, I've been watching them for years, um, back Japan. when they were like wrestling at like PWG and stuff yeah. like that. And and I know like he got a lot of those indie guys to 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 take away competition because he knew they were going to go somewhere, and they had a backing. You know they they had a following, and. Like I said, this is just stuff I've, been, I've read, you know, throughout the years um, when he, Vince started, you know, getting all these in, independent guys. And it, it it does suck because, like, like I'm a huge fan of AJ Styles. And, yeah, he, you know, he gets his push and he doesn't, but I always feel like he doesn't 
reached the pinnacle of what he could be that they kind of always keep him down a little bit and and it, it i feel like especially now with everything um they're not giving us their best storylines i feel like we're getting like um let's not give them the best and wait till till we get fans back so we can get that pop so they're just giving us kind of i think bare bones storyline um because they hopefully i'm hoping they're saving the good stuff for when they can have fans back in the arena yeah like what the f was an, the eye for an eye match like really like <laughs> do better <laughs> wwe and do it's funny that better. that rob brings up that whole they're waiting to use their best stuff from the if you guys remember aew had a little pay-per-view plan called blood and guts which was going to be their version of Warzone. and i was very pumped for that because it was the inner circle versus um the elite and i really was pumped for that match you had Gold Dust was going to be in that. You had Cody was going to be in that. Young Bucks. Uh, I think uh, uh, Kenny Omega was going to be in that. You had yeah. uh, versus, you know, all of Jericho's crew. And the fact that Cody was like, fuck you, Vince. But War Games was something my dad created. And I'm bringing that shit to AEW. Only I'm making it ten times better. And like... I was legit excited for that. I'm like, all right, this is the competition right here. And I think AEW, in my opinion, is kicking way more ass right now than WWE. Because yeah, I, I agree. their storylines are so good, their their matches are so great, and they're bringing back that nostalgia of the Attitude Era, which I loved. And, you know, you have fucking every week, you have Ambrose going out flipping people off, like, or it's Moxley now, but, you know. You have him going yeah. out flipping people off, and like you don't see that on WWE. You know, I mean, you get you get the drama, and you get the storyline, but I think what what's keeping WWE alive is NXT, and that's because Triple H is doing such an amazing job running that show that Vince just needs to step down already and let him run the entire company. Oh, that 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 you're gonna have to pry those reins out of Vince's hands. He's he's not gonna let that happen, at least not easily. Yeah, but I, I just yes. think with the proven, I'm sorry, Zanny, but I just think the proven. The proven show of NXT, it's like, that's what's keeping your guys' ratings going, dude. Like, that that's literally, I mean, Monday Night Raw's ratings are not as good. SmackDown's ratings are not as good. It's like, there's been some SmackDowns where it's like they had a full-on show, and then, like, they showed something, like, that was old because, like, someone tested positive yeah. for COVID. I hate when they do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, too, is their ratings have been disgusting. When literally people have nothing to do but sit <laughs> home... And watch TV. They're not. They watching. are. They are not watching. Yeah. I mean, at least the only thing is, is like between the Wednesday night war, is at least some people are at least changing the channels between the both. Yeah. Um. And so like one week they're watching one, the other week they're watching the other. You know what I mean? So like that's getting people to watch. Um. And I agree that AEW is succeeding and getting better storylines, and I think that boils down to a lot of those guys on there. Just want you know have a creative want to have a creative input right and they're willing to sit at the table um, with each other and discuss things you know what I mean yeah where it's not they have to just sit at the table and discuss things and in WWE they can sit at the table and discuss things but that final decision comes from Vince on what happens you know what I mean right so I think in AEW they have a lot more creative freedom because um, I think whatever his name is the guy who owns it is like he wants to make sure things are good but like at the end of the day as long as everyone can agree I think it's pretty fine. And coming from the top with, like, the Young Bucks and, like, Cody Rhodes, because uh, I was reading this whole article about them, was that, like, they may get in a fight, uh, like, about, like, how to, like, do things at the end of the day. But, like, at the end of the day, they're all buying into the brand and wanting to be team players. And whatever is best for the brand and making profits and making things work out, I think when if the top's buying into that, the rest of the roster will buy into that. Right. And yeah. so um, that's why they're, they're so successful right now, though, you know? Yeah, and they're having a lot of fun, too. Yeah. I mean, like, if everyone can show up to their job and not be like, fudge, now I have to go talk to Vince because he wrote this stupid uh, promo for me. Or, I don't really like his decision on this match. You know what I mean? Like, then people are going to, you know, like, you know, they're going to lose morale. But if they're like, I'm excited to show up to speak to wrestling, you know what I mean? Then it's going to work out. But let's be real, guys. I mean, you know, AEW's got a bunch of the top indie stars in their company at the moment. But... I think that and they got the mainstream with Jericho. I was gonna say I think that company is where it's at right now because of Jericho. Um, Jericho 
After he left his run at WWE, he went to New Japan and started a whole fucking thing there. And Cody was still in the indies right there, and they were slowly developing AEW as they went. Um, and then they finally did All In. All In was the pay-per-view, the AEW's debut pay-per-view, and everyone went through the roof for that pay-per-view. Tickets sold out in like 10 minutes, 12 minutes, or something like that. Uh... From there, they finally got the TV deal with TNT, which was a big slap in the face to WWE because if you guys remember the Monday Night Wars, WCW was owned by TNT. So that was a slap and in the I, face. And I think USA is partnered with TNT, aren't they? Because they have the same parent company. USA? Oh, USA. Um, has, it's the same, has I, the same parent company, maybe. Maybe so, maybe. And so they lost SmackDown, and they were like, well, we'll just replace it with AEW. Right. And we all know SmackDown has not been well since it's been on Fox. Fox, yeah. Nope. So, I think with AEW doing the things that they've been doing, and they brought on, you know, Moxley. You know, he left rest. He left WWE because he just didn't agree with their stupid storylines. He he gave up so much money because he just didn't want to do any other stupid storylines. And then literally two months later, the biggest slap in the face to Vince was, "I'm going to AEW." bringing back the John Moxie character and uh, we're going to start a feud with Kenny Omega because that's what people want to see. Yeah. So, you know, they're, they're getting all these guys from the WWE that got let go. A very big waste of talent who was one of my favorites was Rusev. And I'm hoping he makes an a, a indie comeback pretty soon. Um, Same. I love Rusev. But he did start his own Twitch channel. That's good. So you can check it out. Um, <laughs> and his wife is on there for anyone Lana's, that cares. Lana is good. Lana is good. Mm-hmm. Lana's nice. Rob's kind of being quiet because maybe his wife is sitting right next to him and he's like, mm-hmm. No, she's not in the house, but I don't want her to watch his back and be like, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you. What, you? You? Lana, huh? Oh, yeah. Lana, huh? That's, that's where we're going now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but I, I, all in all, wrestling, I uh, hope it gets better by the time next year pops around because I really want to go to WrestleMania. You know what? I, I don't, this, my cousin couldn't be lying to me. Uh, who is more into wrestling than I am, which is possible. Um, he told me that they were talking about not having it, uh, like canceling it here in L.A. Uh, next year. So I, I guess don't, I'm just yeah, never, I'm never destined to go to WrestleMania then, you know? Yeah, no, I don't think you are. Yeah, they are in talks with moving up. Well, because obviously you have to think about it. L.A. is booming with COVID right now. Yeah, we're, we're a hot um, spot right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't speak because Arizona is a hot spot too. But... Yeah. Uh, and I mean, we just crossed 150,000 deaths as a nation. So USA, USA, right? Um, so, but that's besides the point. Um, they need to find somewhere else probably because I don't anticipate March or April. Next I can't year. have another WrestleMania like we did this year. I just can't. Oh uh, well, that's the thing though. Is they have to find somewhere um, that's going to allow them to have fans and allow Florida? them to open up. Oh yeah, Florida will take anyone. So. Florida. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have it at the what is, what is COVID? What? <laughs> Don't even know the meaning of the word. <laughs> I, Disney wants, I think Disney will host anyone at this point, proving you know, <laughs> they're hosting the NBA and MLS. We'll hold it at the World Walt Disney World. That's hilarious. But... Bro, off the top of Magic Kingdom, Shane McMahon's coming off and dropping an elbow on someone. Oh, yeah. Someone's coming. Someone's ziplining in from Matterhorn down to the ring. It's just going to happen. Be Shawn Michaels. Yep, Heartbreak Kid or Sting. Um, Three. <laughs> they bring because they can't push any of their current stars. Yeah. We'll bring back Sting <laughs> and Shawn Michaels. Yeah, pretty pretty much what they do. That's what they do. But yeah, wrestling. It is what it is. Um, let's talk about a little bit about video games right now because there's a game that I just got ten minutes into and I really want to play it again. And that's Ghost of Tsushima. Have not played it. I've heard nothing. I watched some gameplay footage. Uh, it looks amazing. Uh, one of my friends played it, and he said it, it's very uh, cinematical, if that's a word. Right. That's the word I'm using. I'm sure he used, he used a different word for, like, it looks like, like a movie, pretty much. I'm going to use the word cinematical. So I definitely want to check it out, but I just can't ever stop playing uh, Call of Duty. So. Sammy, where can they find gameplay? Uh, they can go find it on the Mad Crab D- Gaming. I'll kill Just kidding. You. Mad Slash uh, uh, Era. What is it? Mad Slash Era. You're right. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. I yeah, caught buddy. it, bro. Yep, Robert's Number currently, one fan, Robert bro. is currently working on that series right now. 
I'm yeah. trying to finish Last of Us 2 because God knows I should have been done with that game a long time ago. But you gotta enjoy it. It's not how quickly you get to the end. It's the journey. It's actually, okay, Last of Us 2 has gotten tons of shit over the past couple, the month it's been out. And I think it's a great game. I really do. People are just mad. Spoiler alert. Stop watching now. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Joel dies. I was gonna, how do you know Rob didn't play the game? No, 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 it's fine. I, I'm not, I mean, I already knew what happened. I didn't play it, but spoilers don't bother me because if something's, I've always had the mindset, you could tell me how anything ends because if it's good, I'm still going to enjoy it. So. I can't, I'm not like that with Marvel movies though. You can't, if you spoil a Marvel movie, I'm just going to Oh yeah, I'll kill you face. if you spoil a Marvel movie. A yeah. Marvel movie or like a good Batman movie, you spoil it for me, uh, I will. Hands, I will, we'll hands on sight? Hands on sight. I had My a dad. friend who, I had Go a friend ahead, who uh, tried to spoil The Dark Knight Rises for me because he lives in he lived in Colorado at the time, and so they got the movie, uh, you know, they're a couple hours ahead, and he texts me and he's like, "Oh, this is what happens," and I was just like, oh. "Wait!" Luckily, he was just messing with me. He didn't tell me. Wasn't that kid, where but... the the shooting happened for that movie? That was. Um, that was it, right? Yeah, it was in yeah, Colorado. That was, it was up, in it was Aurora. Up there, in Aurora, yeah, it was up there. Yeah, he thought he was a Joker. That's not okay. That's yeah. not, especially with a movie that doesn't even involve the Joker. Come on, dude. Yeah, no, no bueno. That's not even near funny, but yeah, I mean Marvel movie like it was hell watching Infinity War because my dad would knew all the spoilers going into it. I had to sit next <laughs> to him the entire movie. Every time someone died, all I heard was "That's one, that's two. <laughs> I'm like, but, but, shut up! But, but <laughs> did he know, Mister Stark? I don't feel so good. Yeah, he probably did. Because, huh. well, you could have known Spider-Man was going to be crumbling into dust, but you weren't ready for that. I can guarantee that. You weren't ready for that improvised scene. Here's, the thing is, with, with that, um, I like when you follow like movie stuff, you, Like I knew all these characters had sequels coming. So like my wife was very like invested. Like she, I think she... I'm, I might get in trouble for saying this, but I think she pretty much just cried when when Spider Man was going. Maybe it was me crying. I'm not Hold sure. Hold on, but... I think we all cried when Spider Man was going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I knew. Okay, I got a little teary eyed. But I knew, like, well, this isn't forever because they have they all have sequels coming. So I was just like, I couldn't really. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I was just like, oh, all right. Like you're trying to tug on my heartstrings, but you know, I know, I know, I know. There's other movies. Coming However, to me. and spoilers for Endgame. But Black Widow died, and look at she's getting her movie. That is true, bro. But we all know I love you three thousand. By we the way, not ready for that. Eighties Tees dot com, one of the greatest T shirt websites I've ever had. That's the next Marvel shirt I'm gonna buy, be buying. Is I love you three thousand with in the O for the for the love. It's it's the uh, his arc reactor, and it's like placed perfectly pretty, on your heart. So it's like right in the middle. That's pretty cool. That's, that is pretty that's sick. Touching. It's pretty sick, but. Rob, congratulations. You made it through your first Nights of Horror video. Well, you know, I'd just like to thank, uh, you know, my mother for raising such a strong individual and my father for never letting me slack off. So thank you, Mom and Dad. I'd like to thank um, this bottle of Jack Daniels. Yes. Which I will be opening this weekend and drinking after I go to Frankenstein's, that is. And maybe maybe tomorrow during the 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 ma- or the the, uh, the new era podcast when we're doing that live, be good to crack open the bottle and uh, do some gameplay. By the way, a shameless plug. Mad slash era, the podcast. Go listen to it because I took a lot of inspiration from a certain commentator at NXT and went ape shit going through that gameplay. So I, I plan to I tend to do that every week. I I wanted to say in all seriousness, I. Thank you guys so much for having me on. Um, I know I, I talked to you guys earlier and said about, you know, my wife telling me last kind of last year when I was, you know, first met you guys and talking with you, you're like, oh, hey, you know, you should work with them. And I was just like, ah, nah, they're out of my league. Um, and to be here now and, you know, when, when you when you message me, I was just like, my wife asked me, she's like, did you cry? And I was just like, no, I didn't cry, but I appreciate it so much. Thank you guys so much for bringing me on and, uh, from the bottom of my heart, all the way to the top of my heart. Thank you so much. See that, Sammy? Oh. That's, 
that's a the that's plus a freaking team player. So we got we, now after this podcast is over, we got to tell you the dues you have to pay each one of us. No, I'm just kidding. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah, mine is feet picks. So oh god, that still keeps going. Why does that keep coming <laughs> back every week? Oh god, the only I fans, hate. the only fans, Knights of Horror page with just feet picks of all the members. Sammy, that's a. Going, uh, we got to make some money somehow. Because right. our Patreon ain't getting nobody. But maybe our OnlyFans with feet picks will get somebody. About? We don't got a Patreon no more. Shut oh, yeah. Let's go. Shut that shit down years ago, yeah. months ago. But um, I will say, Rob, the pleasure is ours yes. to have you alongside us. Um, I, I, and... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this firsthand, and this is all seriousness. Today's podcast, I think, went well, and I'm very excited for the future of Nights of Horror. I love, yeah. I love the vibe that you bring to the channel. I love your personality. Uh, your enthusiasm just to be on the show that really brought a whole new vibe to the channel and I when I when I remember telling Sammy that I brought you on he was very um, very excited because I remember he, he does remember that we met you at Knott's and he knew who and you I'm were. a big fan of your movies I'm a big fan of on the, on fence. the fence yeah we're both big fans of on the fence man I mean movie so. buffs, coming from movie buffs ourselves to see other movie buffs that are very invested into this like what they love they're passionate about is something great Oh, thanks, thanks, guys. We, yeah. we, we appreciate your support as well. On the fence movie reviews, links in the description below. Go subscribe. All right. Well, once again, that'll do it for today. It was a pleasure to shoot the beep with all of you, because I'm not going to say that word. And uh, thank you all. Make sure you hit that like button, Sammy. hit that subscribe button. Shit. <laughs> Thank you for saying it for me. Um, you can follow us on social media at the Knights of Horror on Twitter right. and Knights of Horror on Instagram. All right. Um, and Jack Downs, um, if you're watching, please sponsor us. Uh, yes, um, that's not going to happen. But we'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace. I'll see you guys later.